back. Uh, I am looking forward to this topic for sure. We have Clay Miner joining us as the uh, Global VP of Sales and Value Engineering. Welcome, Clay. Hey, Joe. Nice to see you. Glad to be yeah. here. Yeah, definitely. Glad you could participate. Uh, this is a cool topic. Think you're good at listening. You're not. <laughs> I would love to tell more of my reps to be listening uh, more actively. So definitely interested in what you've got to talk about. So I will duck out and let you take over. Awesome. Well, thanks. Well, I, I got to say, I love this format. I think in this two-dimensional world that we live in, 15 minutes is is my attention span. So I'm hoping that those out there listening can take something away in this, this short time frame. Uh, but as Joe said, my hot take is think you're good at listening. You're not. I spent a lot of time uh, perfecting the art of listening and... Um, and I'm really excited to talk about that today. But first, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm a Global Vice President of Sales and Value Engineering at Pendo. Uh, Pendo is a not so small startup, about a thousand people. Um, but I've been there and really seen that company scale almost 10x from when I joined. Um, my interesting fact, I chose to go a little different direction. Uh, and I really like octopuses. And octopuses, if you didn't know, have three hearts and blue blood. Now, I could talk about how I started a company out of you know, 14 or the, the mountains that I've climbed, but this to me is interesting and I bet you will remember it more than some fact about myself. And what is most interesting is not so uh, the three hearts and the blue blood, but in fact it is octopuses and not octopi. Octopuses is a, octopus is a Greek origin word, not a Latin origin word. If it was Latin, it would be octopi. I learned that just recently, so I thought I would share it. But let's talk a little bit about my hot take and how we got there. So early in my career, I was a mechanical engineer. I, I you know, had the opportunity to go into oil and gas. I chose not to and got into consulting. And as a consultant, you know, you're, you're paid hourly, basically, to, to be on site. At, and I was all over the world. Um, and, and as I observed in my early years, the, the best consultants were, were often the best listeners. And it was something that, that, that about that experience that I then took with me as I moved to San Francisco, got involved in early startups and, and ultimately sales and go to market, um, that I really carried with me and I built. And it wasn't until recently has, have I really kind of uh, used this idea of active listening to define me. And as I look around my counterparts, um, it's often overlooked by revenue teams. And I bristle all the time when I see on LinkedIn about, hey, make sure you're asking these discovery questions. Here, how, here's how you price protect. This is how you, you know, do your BANT or, or force management or med pick or whatever it is. It's all about what we say um, versus how we listen, how we use our ears. And I think that's because most people just assume that they're good at listening, uh, where in fact they're not. Because um, listening is hard. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and I also just, you know, have observed going through sales training myself. Like I said, it's very focused on what to say when, the five whys, here's how you price protect. And then I think that, um, you know, this, this world of remote work has made the problem worse. Um, so let's, let's dive a little deeper and talk about <clears throat> what, what I'm talking about when I say the difference between active listening and, say, hearing. So in short, active listening takes focus. And focus is something that's really hard to do, especially in two dimensions like we are right now. In fact, for those out there right now, I bet half of you are merely hearing me. And there's a big difference between hearing and listening. I hear the motorcycle driving by my house right now, right? It's involuntary. Listening is something you opt into, right? You opt in with both your mind and your body. I, I turn towards that presenter. I give them my full self and I'm listening to you, right? That's different than hearing, right? If you have uh, your slack up right now, you're hearing me. You're not listening to me. The other thing that I think often people confuse is, is maybe they're focused and they're locked in, but they have preconceived stuff going on in their mind. They're thinking about what they want to say. And I've observed this often with early career sales profession professionals or sales engineers where maybe they're doing some discovery and they hear a, hear, you know, a pain point that, that they can solve. And boy, are they excited to talk about that. So they turn off listening and they start thinking about what they're going to say. They get excited by that. Well, that's a miss, right? If you're thinking about what you're going to say, that's exactly what you're doing. You're not actually listening. You're thinking about what you're going to say, right? Um, and I think, you know, the final thing that we should all just realize and recognize is active listening is hard. And admitting that you weren't listening is okay. And I think we really need to normalize that. I was on a, um, a, a vendor call, surprise, surprise, an AI vendor that, that we were investigating for a use case. And, um, 
you know, I was describing the pain that I was having and I could tell that, that the rep on the call was not listening to me. They, their eyes were shifted up. I could, you know, they were probably on Slack multitasking as we're all guilty of. But uh, I, I, instead of them saying, oh, sorry, Clay, I wasn't listening. Can you repeat that? They launched into a demonstration that really had little to do with the problem that I was having. And I think I would be totally fine if that individual just said, oh, hey, shoot, sorry, I got distracted. Say that again. I'm locked in. Now I'm listening. And I think that, um, that we're all too, you know, uh, I guess a little gun shy to admit at times when we're distracted. So what can we do to kind of coach this? And I think this is really the takeaway that I'm hoping people learn. I've done this workshop at several companies. I actually um, was part of a leadership council that, that did this workshop, but I've taken it with me and I think it plays great with revenue teams. And um, that is you take, take, your, take your, 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 your team and break them up into groups of two people, right? So you're gonna have groups of two and have the first person share a goal while the other person listens. And that goal can be work-related or personal-related. I want to run a marathon, right? And <clears throat> the rules are the, the listener needs to avoid judgment, which is really hard to do, but clear their mind of any preconceived judgment. They need to avoid giving advice. Here's what I would do, right? Also pretty hard. <clears throat> or sharing in any perspective. Oh, you want to run a marathon? My sister ran a marathon. Blah, blah, blah. Like All these three things are off the table. They can only ask questions for clarification. And what's an example? Clarification is something like, hey, what I hear you're saying is, when you say X, do you mean Y? Sharing empathy is totally fine. Oh, I can sense that's really frustrating. What do you think you're going to do about X, Y, Z? These are, these are active listening questions that you can use for clarification, right? After the five minutes, have your participants switch and then do the same thing. <clears throat> now, here's, and then, you know, of course, at the end of, of this 10-minute exercise, go around the room, have participants, both listeners and um, the people sharing the goal, have them reflect on the experience. And I think you're going to find uh, two things. First, the people who are listening are going to find this difficult if they haven't done this before, because it is hard to avoid judgment. It's hard to avoid giving advice. And I think the perspective piece is, is, a, is particularly hard. It's human nature to want to jump in and say, oh, well, you know, that reminds me of this one time. And that's what we're really trying to avoid. If we're truly listening, we're locked in, it's your floor, right? <clears throat> On the other side, the person that was sharing, I guarantee you somebody in, the, in your group is going to say, wow, that was really valuable. I found that valuable. And this is where it comes back and to me is the magic moment in sales. You know, I, I run a value engineering team and the goal of this team is to help quantify value. And we, we joke that the V word is, is way overused in software sales. But the reality is that value can simply be exhibited, can be given by, by active listening, by, by listening to somebody. And, and reflect on this with me. Think back to, to your personal life. Think back to times where you've been confronted with change. When you wanted to change who you are, you wanted to, to, to achieve something. Chances are there's people in your life that help you get there. And I guarantee you those people you think of as good listeners, as people you trust, right? And if you think of enterprise software sales, it's no different. We're selling change ultimately, right? Yes, we sell tools, but the tools are just used for organizational change. And in order to get that deal across the line, that person must trust you and uh, must person have an empathetic relationship with you. Right. And we do this by being good listeners. Now, <clears throat> I want to leave you with this. This is a good story that that really has kind of, um, I don't know, solidified this idea that has really kind of been, been, a, been a bedrock of my career. I was um, very early in my career. This is pre IPO Zendesk days. And um, I was in New York. We had a deal, a multi billion dollar deal, uh, a conglomerate. They sell perfume or something like that. Um, but we were in the 47th floor of the Empire State Building. And I was an eager individual contributor SE. And I was so fired up. I'd done tons of prep work. I got into that demonstration. And uh, I thought I crushed it, right? I thought I crushed it. And we come down from that demonstration. And I remember sitting with the account executive at lunch. And I could just tell something was off. And uh, I finally said, look, John, what's going on? You know, and he reaches across the table and kind of taps the table and looks at me and just says, hey, Clay, next time, just talk less. And it's something that has kind of stuck with me and become a little bit of a, a mantra of mine for teams that I coach and, and folks in my organization. And I mean that sometimes literally, 
But what I mean more importantly is, is calm your mind. And, and when you are in a situation where people are, are, are trying to change, you, you need to open the aperture and truly listen. And that takes your mind, your body and quietness, right? So just talk less. Now, <clears throat> I want to transition a little bit um, and then we'll get into QA, but <clears throat> it wouldn't be um, uh, right without a shameless plug for, for my company, Pendo. So Pendo is great at listening to your customers. We really are leading in this kind of product-led movement. Um, we offer a suite of tools for product managers um, and you know, quantitative analytics. We do offer survey capabilities uh, and, a, and a wide variety of other things. We do offer a free platform hit the QR code, hop in there um, and get excited about it. But I really appreciate people listening. I hope people were listening, probably maybe half of you were if we're lucky. Um, but with that, I would love to go to uh, questions Q&A and, uh, and hear from anybody on chat. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if anybody's got a question or comment, feel free to post it in there. Uh, in the meantime, I like... Uh, I think the story uh, resonates with me a lot. Uh, the stories that you that you shared, uh, and also the this the, I have a similar one when it when it comes to multitaskers, right? I I I kind of hate the word multitasking because it's not the, a, yeah. it's not a real thing, right? Uh, yeah. And how many mm -hmm. times have you been in a situation where you're trying to talk to one of your coworkers? They're either looking at their phone, they're typing on Slack, they're clicking other things. And you say, oh, did you get that? And they say, yeah, I got it. I'm, I'm really good at multitasking. That's to me is a fallacy, right? Yeah. Like you're really not giving your attention. You're really not giving your focus. And there's so many times where that spills over into our conversations with buyers, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I'm, so I'm, I'm just curious, like how you've seen that, not only from the buyer conversations, even just the interpersonal, inner office type of uh, like environment lately with devices and the motorcycle yeah. driving by and all that stuff. How is that kind of getting better or worse for you? I, you know, I will say that the, the Zoom world we live in makes this tremendously difficult because you know, pre-COVID when we were all in person, I was the, the first one to say, hey, laptops down. Right. If, if I had an internal meeting, it was a laptop down meeting. We did not have distractions because it's a waste of time. It's inefficient. Right. But in this two dimensional world, it's you know, I can appear as if I'm listening to you, but I've got Slack and Gmail and Twitter and a whole bunch of other distractions. So it's, it's really difficult. Um, but I, I do think that um, I think being open and honest, uh, especially with prospects saying, hey, look, I'm not here to waste your time. I, I want to get right to the point. Uh, I want to be judicious with how we um, we execute this meeting. And I think attention spans have gotten shorter and shorter. And so to me, I think you, you got to, you know, do the best that you can in the two dimensional world. And that is if you're, if your topic is only 17 minutes, run 17 minutes and get the heck off the phone. Right. I think what right. happens is the reason people multitask is they lose value in the conversation. And so I think, you know, the, the antidote, of course, is to have high impact, high value, straight to the point um, conversations and, and kind of move at the speed of, of the two dimensional world requires. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I, I maybe my last comment, then I want to maybe flip the script a little bit. What about your prospects and their active listening? Right. Yeah. How many times have you been on a demo call or, or any sort of customer, you know, call and you're going on a diatribe about the, the wonders of Pendo, right? Yeah. Uh, and you just start seeing the, the conversation drift a bit and the, the heads yeah. nodding down. Are there strategies that you guys use or think of as you're going the opposite direction? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm always a fan of, of name calling. I don't mean that rudely, but I, I will say like, you know, hey, Joe, what do you think? because I see you looking down at your phone and all of a sudden it's like a student in class being called on. Oh shoot. I, I was supposed to be tuning in. Right. Yeah. So I do think just kind of building that, that repertoire and being able to call on people and you can do that on zoom. I think that's totally fair. Um, but I, again, I think it's just important to stay, stay tight. Uh, the, the tighter, the shorter, um, you know, I, I, I feel like, like I've just said this over and over again, but I just attention spans. I've just seen it in myself. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just been shrinking. And so, you've got to stay tight with your message to combat that stuff. For sure. Well, Clay, thank you so much. We're up at time now. Hopefully everyone had a good listen in uh, and uh, took something away. Uh, appreciate you spending the time with us. It was a wonderful uh, talk and hope to connect soon.
Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Joe. All right. Have a great, great day. And we are on our last uh, speaker up next before uh, our break. So hang around. We've got another five minutes. We'll join back in at 1220 Eastern time uh, for Nicholas. Talk soon.